What if your futuristic robot girlfriend died because you wanted to get frisky near the dishwasher? That's how this classic from the 80s starts out. Hey everyone, um, on this week's Take 2 review, I'm reviewing Cherry 2000 from oh, sometime in the 80s, I think 86, I'm on to say maybe 87. Um, let's see if IMDb can help me out there. Uh, no, it cannot. Anyways, um, it stars the only really big, two big stars, well, one big star, one big B-movie star uh, that were in it. Uh, Melanie Griffith plays sort of the main character. She kind of shares the top billing with the guy that uh, hires her. And then the bad guy in the movie is Tim Thomerson, who er, was in, and is probably still in big movies. I know he's in... Uh, hundreds of them. The Transfer series, uh, he's in Near Dark, he's in a lot of other movies, but that's the only ones I can think of off the top of my head. And I just saw 87 is when this came out. And it's actually set in 2017. So even though it was set in the future, 30 years in the future from its release, we are done past it. <laughs> <laughs> we are done in the future and this is in the past um anyways this is sort of a post-apocalyptic movie they don't ever really explain why the world is fucked up if it's global warming if it's been more uh, but they have some really high tech tech but they're also scavengers so uh, the main guy uh I can't remember what he does for a living. There's a lot of scavenging and savaging, even in the big cities. But he has a sex robot that is sort of his wife, and her she's a Cherry 2000. But they don't make them anymore. Um, and he ends up... Uh, uh, he ends up tearing her up you could say in a sexual tryst in the kitchen because she gets water from the dishwasher in her which let's face it that's a really poorly made sex robot if you can't get liquids <laughs> in the robot um but he's so forlorn that even when his friends try to hook him up with live women uh, which they do have a good idea in this movie they have like singles bars but you have to sign a contract and they have lawyers so you kind of know what you're getting into or at least have a plan to get out of it uh, but he's not interested in that and he hears someone talk about that they still have more cherries uh, in the desert of Las Vegas and he decides to go out to the wastelands and hire a tracker and the tracker is Melanie Griffith's character and they do an arduous trek through the desert and run into Tim Thomerson's um, marauders uh, they have their own little kind of not really civilization but compound in the desert and they kind of control all of the well anything going on there they want a piece of it uh, they finally make it to the warehouse in the middle of the desert uh, it's covered in sand like nearly up to the roof but they do find another uh, cherry model that he can put his old one's memory chip in but by the time you get to that point in the movie he's actually fell in love with Melanie Griffith's character but it's a fun post-apocalyptic sci-fi adventure movie 
Is it great? No, not, not by any means. Is it... I wouldn't tell you to buy it. No. Uh, I, I bought it twice over the years because I grew up watching it and I have a nostalgia for it, which makes me enjoy it much more than I think I would have if I had just watched it, you know, for the first time recently. But is it worth a, a rent or if someone or some some place like Prime or Tubi or or anything like that has it to watch for free, it's it's definitely worth a watch because you may you may enjoy it uh, if you like anything I've said in this, and if you don't, at least it didn't cost you anything but your time. Uh, but if it sounds interesting, to check it out, and if if not, well, you don't have to. You can just saved yourself over an hour and a half by watching me anyways we will see y'all next week and uh that will be for a new movie probably uh, supposed to be getting visible man uh should have it at least by monday so that will probably what i review but i might review something else i'm not sure yet anyways we'll see y'all later